What's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian. I am a photographer based in the Portland, Oregon area. I mostly shoot landscape, lifestyle, and street photography. I'm shooting on the M and Q system primarily. And we're going to be touching on the Leica Q, the original Q, the Q1, the Q Type 116. I picked up this camera about a year ago, almost exactly probably, in January 2023. So I've had it for a year. It's only been in my possession for eight months. I had to get service, which took about four months, and I'll touch on that. Uh, but I just figured it's time to kind of share my experience with it and thoughts on it. I'm mostly just going to answer the question of why the Q for me, and then how, as in how it fits into my gear closet and, you know, gear arsenal and kind of setup. Um, it's actually changed a little bit since I've owned it. I actually shoot it in a different manner it, or you know it fulfills a, a different purpose so to speak um so yeah just kind of wanted to share my experience with it and hopefully it's helpful uh, before we get started i will say if you enjoy any of the color grading of the photos that you see that i'll share um, those are edited with my presets so if you check the link in the description uh, you can check out my presets there i pretty much use um, a combo of any of those to edit um, the photos that you'll see here and anything on my instagram and other videos and such. Um, so if you like what you see, uh, feel free to look down there. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is my Leica Q, if I can just pick it up carefully in a minute here. So that's him. I got a Q116 um, in the titanium gray color. I think this came out in about 2017. It has a fixed 28 1.7 lens, so 28 uh, millimeters and 1.7 aperture. Fixed lens, can't take it off. Um, no buttons on the front or nothing, right? Got a manual aperture ring on it. Uh, back side, couple of buttons, and uh, not much else. Got your screen. I have a thumb grip on there, and then the top has a shutter dial. Um, and yeah, exposure comp dial and record button. Not much. Really clean, sleek design, which is what I like about it. So in terms of the specs, just the kind of the baseline standard. Um, it's got 24 megapixels, so I think that's pretty standard with most cameras today, right? I mean, they're going up and up, but 24 is kind of the standard, I think, if you, you know, if you need something decent enough for some cropping, but decent resolution overall. Hasn't been an issue going from a Sony a7R 3 with 42 megapixels, if I recall, down to the Q of 24 megapixels. Like I said, 28 millimeter lens, 1.7 maximum aperture. It's a fixed lens, so you can't take it off. Um, but that's really the two important things. You get 24 megapixels and you get a 28 1.7 lens. Lens is beautiful. Color and contrast rendition is great. Um, the depth of field isn't like super shallow, right? Because it's a wide lens. But when you do get up close, I think the bokeh looks really nice. Um, I like the manual controls. I love the manual aperture ring. I love the manual shutter dial. It's got a focus tab so you can shoot manual and then you have a little tab that you can squeeze your finger into. It does focus peaking. It has video. It has a dedicated record button. Uh, it only does 1080p and it's all like automatic settings so it's not really a good video camera but if you don't really care about that and you just want something you can record on, um, you know, you can, you can use it for that. I would say at this point if you have like a pretty modern phone, it's probably better or maybe they're like kind of close you know but uh it does have right it is a full frame sensor as opposed to like a iphone or something and it does have um good depth of field and stuff but then the, the lens kind of breathes a little bit and it'll kind of pulsate for its continuous focus so it's it's uh, it's just not the best video camera there's different metering modes different autofocus modes for my general purpose i don't really think there's a lot i'm missing from like my a7r3 um, you know with that camera it's just it's just fun to take out and I love the small compact design um, so yeah I think that probably just covers the specs the way I shoot the camera is I keep my shutter set pretty much at 1 1 25th and then I crank the aperture to where I need it and then I let the auto ISO do its thing and then um, I will use the exposure comp dial if I need it shutter speed I just kind of change it for what I need. If I'm shooting general landscape or street or stuff, I do let it sit at 1 1 25th, mostly to let as much light in as I can to keep the ISO down. I always try to shoot with the lowest ISO possible. These days I'm doing that on auto ISO, but I will crank the exposure comp dial, dial down if I need to. So that's how I have it set up. Mostly think of things in aperture these days. Um, keep that shutter speed where I need it, depending on what I'm shooting. In terms of the why, uh, you know, why the Q, it's just... I've always wanted a Leica. It was the first Leica I bought, and 
I just I thought the key was the most practical because of the cost versus value and the uh, the autofocus right because manual focus Leicas are great I love my M cameras but autofocus is just it's more practical especially if you're using it as like a everyday carry and taking it into a lot of situations 2022 I started shooting film and I would take a film camera out by itself in a sling I loved the you know just doing that and I realized I wanted a digital camera with me. The Sony a7R 3 and the, the lenses, they're kind of big. It wasn't really maximum comfort if I wanted to get a big sling and stick my film camera in there and a Sony with the smallest lens I had. So I decided I'd pick up a fixed lens camera, compact, everyday carry type of thing to shoot next to my film camera. I got an X100V, mostly due to cost. I actually wanted the Q or the Q2. But I was like, I don't know how this concept and role of this camera is going to play out. So I'll get the Fuji and we'll go from there. So I got the Fuji, liked it um, for the most part in terms of like its compactness and the role it was playing and the manual dials on the Fuji for the shutter and aperture. But I didn't like the camera. I, it felt like a toy, not an actual camera. So I sold it, got the cue, which is, like I said, I really wanted a cue to start anyways, but I just kind of needed to test my theory in that experiment, and that's it. Haven't looked back since. Really love the cue. Uh, build quality is fantastic. It feels like a camera. It feels like a tank compared to that Fuji I had, and I think it, you know, it's the perfect camera that I was looking for to uh, fulfill the role of taking out next to a film camera. So that's what I used it for for a long time. Then I picked up a, an M240. And I started shooting the Q next to my M rangefinder on digital. Then I picked up an M6 and started shooting the Q next to the M6. And I'd swap out the digital and film M bodies as I went. And that was a really good combo. I think the Q is a really good um, complement to the M system, depending on what your lens, you know, your lens uses are. I think it's a great combo to shoot those next to each other. So, long story short, I then had to get everything serviced. I got my 240 cleaned up, I got my M6 cleaned up, and the Q. And what ended up happening was the Q had to go off to Leica, it took a while, so I started shooting the rangefinders side by side while waiting for the Q. And that changed its role. So now what I do with the Q is I take it out in a small 3 liter wandered sling, it just barely fits in, I take it out just with the camera, a slot in the bag for my strap and a couple of batteries and a spare SD and that's it and it's really fulfilling the role of an everyday carry compact like one camera solution uh, you know piece of kit and I really 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 like that and I think that's where this camera shines is being an everyday carry that is small and compact but really does deliver like high quality photo output right with its full frame sensor and its lens. Uh, I think that's where it shines and I think that's where it's going to live um, in my gear closet for me. I don't strap my cameras up, I don't like it, I think it's a little risky, I'd hate to hit them on something or trip and fall on a hiking trail and smash the camera or you know if someone wanted to like mug me because they saw it and these things do happen. I've read stories of people walking around with the camera on their shoulder and it gets yanked off them so I've never done it but what I came to realize was I think I wanted to do that, especially for street photography. I really think strapping up a camera around you is great, and tons of people do it, and it's fine, right? But I just, like I said, it's I've never been comfortable with it. And I realized that the Q was the best solution for that. So I've started doing that now, and I couldn't be more happy with doing that and having that be the camera that I use that for as um, a camera to strap up with when I'm hiking or shooting street. Like I said, I think it really shines for that. I think it shines as a camera to take with you in a small bag, strap up on you, and have it be just your daily carry, and just kind of risk it a little bit more. I think it's kind of designed for that in a sense. So that's the role it fulfills now. I'll shoot anything with it still, street, lifestyle, landscape, but I can usually find it on a strap, you know, hanging around me, and I love it. I, I just, it's it feels really freeing and, and rewarding. And you could do that with any other camera, right? But again, just my experience and my mindset around that, I think the cue was kind of the, the the key, the key to doing that. So that's I think that's pretty much going to sum it up, right? That's the why, uh, why the cue, and that's the how, how I use it today, and where it fits into everything. I will touch on the service issue I had um, because it's important to note. So before I get into the actual issue, I'll just say 
I think in general like it takes a long time to service things. I don't know for sure, but I'd been reading a bunch of reports on it and they seem to be slow turnarounds in any part of the world and their service quality is a little spotty. I've read too many reports of people getting their product back with the same issue they sent it for or some other new issue that wasn't there when they sent it in. I don't know how much this happens. I don't know the statistics right, um, but my experience wasn't very good in reading all these reports. I'm kind of like, huh, you know, I'm just... I wonder if that's just how they do things. So something to note, if you do get a Leica Q or an M, just or anything in general, I think the service can get a little weird if it has to happen, and it did happen to me. So the actual problem the camera had was the aperture ring had a dead click in it. It would work fine from f1.7 to f16, but once you were between like f5 to 16, it had a dead click going back to 1.7, like the first click backwards. So if I clicked it in from 1.7 to f8, my first click back, which I think would be f7.1, the lens would click and say it's at 7.1, but the screen would still read f8. And then every subsequent click after would work fine. But then once that first dead click was activated, it also had a dead click going back forwards. The lens reading and the screen reading would never match up. And I just ignored it for a while because like I said, from 1.7 to 16, it would work fine. But then eventually I just decided, okay, I need to get this fixed. It's becoming a main camera. Let's send it in. So I went to my local shop. They helped me send it in. It took three months, basically, exactly. I got it back. It had the same exact issue, but they did put on a nice custom skin, uh, the blue leather skin that I requested. And they did that great and it looked awesome, but the lens had the same issue. And I was like, wow, I can't believe this happened because I'd read all those things. And I was like, kind of, what are the odds? Like, really? I had to send it back. It took one month after that. So they expedited it. They basically had it back to me in four weeks after sending it back the second time. And I've been happy with it. And it's been great. And I think they rectified the mistake. But it was kind of a weird experience. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. The Q and the M system stuff, digital at least, they're kind of the only ones that can service it so it's uh, you know you just have to take it as what it is but it's something you have to be aware of i think if you get into the leica world um but other than that i think the q is really reliable i haven't had an issue i know there's a lot of people that shoot them and don't have issues i think i just kind of you know it's just unlucky and it does happen but yeah other than that it's been a great camera um I think I'm going to use it for a very long time. I might upgrade to a Q3 or f even a Q4 at some point. But I think I would actually like to keep the Q1 until it literally dies and cannot be serviced ever again. And I'm going to have it be that camera that I take with me everywhere. And I think eventually maybe I would upgrade into a nicer Q, uh, the Q3 or the Q4, like I said, depending on how that plays out. And I'd carry that around more as a workhorse camera next to my M system. And go back to shooting that combo but for now I'm just shooting my film rangefinder next to my digital rangefinder and I really enjoy that and I like having the Q be a standalone piece of gear that I take out on its own so I think that'll cover it if you like the photos you've seen I have my presets they're available in the description the link is there check them out uh, stay tuned for more stuff I'll be doing some more gear things on Leica and what I have and kind of my full kit um, I'll be talking about the Leica M6 I picked up uh, midway last year, talk about the two lenses I shoot, and then I think I'll do a rundown on a full like gear setup of how I pack things into bags, what I take out together, and the philosophy on that. And uh, yeah, that's probably it for the Leica pipeline. And then, you know, again, if you're interested in what I've got going on on the channel, uh, get in touch, talk to me about whatever, leave a comment, subscribe, all that stuff. If you have any questions on the queue, let me know. Um, I know it can be tough to decide on M system versus Q system, Q1, 2, or 3. Um, I'm always happy to help. DM me on Instagram if you have questions, drop a comment, whatever it may be. Um, so catch you guys in the next one.